welcome back to the channel guys today we're gonna be uh, doing a video on how to scan to email specifically via Gmail to your email so to get started uh, let's get going so to get started we need a few things here so first we're gonna need to know you know what kind of windows is installed on your machine so is it you know kind of like uh, do you have windows uh, you know 7 windows 8 you know 8.1 or windows 10 well you're sitting there and wondering I don't know you know I have no idea what windows installed no worries we're here to help so to find out what windows is installed click on your start button and type in CMD which is which is stand for command prompt and once you enter that uh, we're it's, we're gonna see a black box that's gonna pop up here uh, so once that kind of pops up we're gonna type in a command called VER and hit enter and that will kind of give you an you know kind of version so if you're in you know if you're on Windows 8 or Windows 10 it also kind of tells you here that what version you're running but if you know it's Windows 7 and above then you're good so if, if that is that is good then check mark box to that and then we're ready for the next step all right so step two we need to know what how is your printer connected to your machine is it wireless or is it through uh, a physical USB cable or is it connect to the Ethernet cable now in most cases the easiest way to find out uh, and the reason why we need to know is um, to send an email we need to just like you have a postman uh, you know coming to your house and delivering mail we need some kind of mail provider to scan that email to you and send it to somebody uh, so what we're gonna need is the IP address IP address of the machine right uh, now you're sitting there wondering again all right I have no idea how to get the IP address of the machine so there are two different ways that we can find out uh, what is the IP address on the Canon machine so first and foremost the easiest way is to go to your Canon printer physically and click on the you know click on the setting settings button and once you see the settings button you need to click on the network network settings uh, you know network settings um, once you click on that, then we're going to go ahead and f look for TCP dash IP settings, right? TCP IP settings. Now, once you once you kind of look at it, once you find that, then we need to look for IPv4 settings. So IPv4 settings, and uh, I, once you uh, once you kind of find that out, uh, then we're going to go ahead and look for, uh, you know, uh, or IPv6 setting if you don't if you know if you have IPv4 or IPv6 then you kind of figure it out here uh, so then we're gonna go to you know IP address settings uh, address settings okay I got to fly here uh, settings and IPv6 or IPv4 settings and then click on view settings now when you click on the view settings it's gonna uh, according to if you have IPv4 or IPv6 it's gonna give you a number like you know uh, like 192.x dot you know star dot star which means in in this case is that is you know whatever 192.168 or whatever number that is you, you need to note that down on, on a piece of uh, on a piece of paper right there um sorry about that guys so in my case that number is 10.10.10.249 .10 uh, .10 so I have that noted uh, so if you can find that via that way that would be great another way to find that number is uh, click on control uh, start and type in control panel uh, now once you type in control panel it, it's gonna you know open up the control panel box and we're gonna click on this icon for control panel app uh, so you know w once that kind of opens up we're gonna go to the control p uh, panel settings uh, you know basically and to find that out now if, if your view doesn't look like this don't get scared uh, there's there's nothing wrong here so basically it, it, it may look like this or, or you know kind of may look like the one I showed you here lar large icon so basically click on large icons and let's go ahead and click on devices and printers now once you click on devices and printers it's gonna load you into uh, into there and if you see the default printer you print to mine is MF 6100 you know basically that's where I can find the IP address so if I can right click on that right and, and click on uh, you know printer properties it's gonna open up another dialog box and what we're interested in here is that ports tab now once you click on the ports tab we well, you want to look at the the place where the checkbox is 
in my case it's right here so you can see that my printer's IP address is 10.10.10.249 okay so that's another way I can find that out now if you still can't find the IP address you can contact your uh, you know your IT person they can give you that also if you're using a print service you know, so if you have an IT department that is doing your your print services for you it may look like something like that so so as you see you know FRT and DSK printer so front desk printer on masterpiece so if you right click on that uh, so basically and you if you click on the printer properties uh, and we're gonna go to the ports it all it will also show you what is the IP address so now, remember we're looking for looking for this checkbox so once you have that make sure you go ahead and note that down and I'm gonna speed up the process from here uh, so that that was the another main part uh, to you know how to how to get that going so once you have that uh, you know IP address whatever in your case is go ahead and open a, a web browser like you know Google Chrome or whatever that you use and let's go ahead and, and type in that number again so mine is 10.10.10.249 so I'm gonna click uh, you know go ahead and type that in and it may take a second or two for it to load up now uh, if you have an IPv6 you may see like FE something FE Zero zero and type that in and you'll you'll be brought up to this this page. Now you need to know, uh, you know, you kind you kind of need to know your username and password, username and password to log into the web interface and to make changes. Now, you know, you're like, I've never set this up before, so how the, how do I do this? So basically, uh, you go, uh, so default password list is available. So for my printer, the default username and password is basically admin, and there is no password. So if I type in admin uh, right here, now we don't need the user end, we just need the management mode. So we're gonna have to go ahead and type in admin and click on login, and that would log me into the web user interface. Now, you can try, you can try that, uh, and if your so it looks like uh, there's a connection issue real quick so in the meantime I fixed that but there is another way that you can find that username and password out and I'm gonna give you uh, a website where, where you can find those you know generic username and password for all your Canon printers so right here uh, you know I'm gonna put this uh, you know put this in the description below you know these are the product number or model number these are the username and passwords you guys can try uh, and one of these should work eventually uh, also yeah this will be in the uh, you know link below guys also I'm, I'm looking at the Canon Canon's uh, knowledge page and they also have some recommendation for username and password you know some of our canon canon admin no password administrator no password you know things like that so i'm going to put that in the uh, you know description and we can uh, you guys can you can you guys can work with that here in a second so uh, don't worry about it it'll be in the uh, it will, the link will be in the description all right, so we're back on track. So I've logged into my machine. As you see, my model number is MF6100, and yours may be different. It doesn't matter. The web user interface for Canon models, you know, pretty much looks like the same. And if you can follow this, you can you can get your stuff working. So once we get here, we're gonna go ahead and click on uh, settings and registration. And once you kind of once you kind of click on that, it's gonna pr bring you to another page where we're gonna make those settings for SMTP settings. So we're gonna click on that, and then we'll, then what we're interested in is the network setting so <clears throat> also you'll see that IP address up top here what we found that is what we're going to to configure that as you see 10.10.10.249 uh, so once we click on that network settings then it, it's gonna populate that window where we can configure the SMTP settings so once we click on the network settings it's gonna bring up this tab and also under that that we're, what we're interested in is the email settings so once we click on that it's gonna bring up a page where we can configure the Gmail settings or the SMTP server settings uh, for, for this so let's see okay so that looks a little, a little weird it took a little bit of time to load here uh, I am quite far away from my thing so there we go it got it loaded up properly now so I'm gonna go ahead and click on edit uh, this is where we're gonna be putting in the settings for my Gmail account okay so to kind of get it going the Gmail settings that we're gonna populate <clears throat> are are also gonna be in the in the you know description link uh, that you guys can use all right, so the Gmail settings are right here. So the Gmail server is smtp.gmail.com. Uh, Gmail SMTP username, this is going to be your Gmail address. G SMTP password, this is going to be your, boy, your Gmail password. You know, TLS port and SSL port are also here, and, and TLS SSL is required. Okay, so 
So once you kind of do that, let's go ahead and populate those in in here. So what we're gonna do is, uh, you know, sm tp.gmail.com and my email address I've created a test user is can user 2020 at gmail.com now in this case this will be your own gmail email address okay now also once we kind of do that then what we need to do is is enable SMTP auth so this this you know this is where you put your Gmail uh, you know Gmail address username so mine is scan user two zero two zero gmail dot com and also your Gmail password that you use to log in you know basically to your Gmail account so once you do that click on that on also click on this box that says use SSL you know basically that tells you know use a secure protocol to send my username and password to to the Gmail server and go ahead and click OK. Okay, so once you kind of do that, um, it's gonna save those settings. And when you, once you click OK, it's gonna bring you back to the page and show you the settings. Now, once that setting is done, we're gonna go ahead and add a person into the address book so you don't have to keep typing that email address over and over and over again uh, when you are you know when you're basically trying to uh, send that email to that or to send an email to yourself, okay? Um, so as soon as this page loads, uh, then we're gonna go ahead and click on that setting. All right, so so as you guys can see, there's the there's the settings that are loaded in there, and this is this is what it should look like for you. You know, your username, and password, and set, and things like that. Now we're gonna go back to the portal up here. Once you click on to the portal uh, tab up here, then we're gonna add an email address into your address book, so you don't have to type that on your printer with you know small you know. Uh, you know, small keyboard and things like that. So go ahead and click on address book. Uh, so once you click on address book, it's going to populate your address book. And what I'm going to do is you'll see a list like that. So go ahead uh, and uh, click on one of, one of these, number four, uh, or whatever. If you have number one open, you can, I, as you see, I have some, you know, other users loaded in there. But what do you want to do? Once you click on your, once your page kind of loads up, then you need to click on the email option and go ahead and, and put your uh, information in there so it may ask you for your username and uh, uh, you know not it's gonna ask you for your name and for your email address so so I'm you know it's gonna give you SMB option so basically go ahead and just click on the email tab here and click on OK your page may look you know different because mine's taking some time to load I don't know why I'm you know way away from my wireless here trying to record this so go ahead and put your name here and go ahead and put the uh, the email address you want to scan to okay so and that would be a one touch code and you can also put that in the dial code um, and once you do that what we're gonna do is go ahead and scan an email to my Gmail address okay so so kind of show you that what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this test user. I'm going to scan uh, a piece of paper through this scan user uh, 2020 at gmail.com. So stand by. We're going to go ahead and scan and see what happens. So what I just did, I you know I scanned a copy from my copier to to the email, and uh, oh, my printer is beeping, and I got uh, uh, it threw an error, and it said, okay, transmission error received. So what what is happening here is printer is not able to um, printer is not able to send you know that that email or whatever to the to the proper place it needs to so what's gonna happen so we already know what the issue is here so Google tries to block you from you know try to kind of protect you if somebody's kind of using your email or somebody has figured out your password to do this okay so go ahead and log back to into your email Gmail again and uh, once this mailbox kind of loads up I'll show you what that looks like real quick All right, so so in a few seconds, you guys are gonna receive an email email from Google like this: critical security alert. Somebody tried to you know access your account uh, to to do something goofy. So what we're gonna do is disable you know allow less secure app from from this. So what we need to do here is go ahead and click on your name up top here, and we're gonna click on the Google account icon. And once we click on that Google account icon, we're gonna go ahead and click on you know the basically the security tab where we can uh, where we can allow you know less secure app like you know SMTP to pass through and send that email to you so once you click on that 
uh, go ahead and click on the security tab on the left hand side and it's going to load you into this page and once you once you're loaded into this page you want to scroll all the way down and right here where it says let's secure app right here uh, that's where you want to go ahead and, and say turn on access right so once you click on that uh, you know it's going to load up this page and also you know, make sure you enable that. Now, once you enable that, you 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 can go back and uh, basically uh, you can scroll down again and make sure that uh, you know that app that that setting is also still enabled right here, as you see, you know, on. So now that is done, we can close that and go back to uh, our, our mailbox again. And what what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scan that uh, you know paper one more time. Okay. So again, go to your scan, uh, uh, then address book, put your paper, and then we're gonna uh, then we're gonna go ahead and see what that looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and scan that for you guys here for in second, and we'll see how that looks like. Give me one quick second. All right, so scan, then we're going to go to email and go to, go to address book and find my name, that test user, and click on start. And once that is done, uh, and also in the meantime, Google's also going to send you this critical security alert saying, hey, listen, you have enabled less secure apps. And we notice we don't recommend that, but that is one way to to get that going. So once you do that right there, as you see, see that email just populated uh, that, hey, you got a new scan. So I just scanned that and I got that in my attachment. So right there, you'll see that I scanned a new Gmail test scan right here, 2019, 2020. So that's how you can that's how you guys can you know set up scan to email using gmail smtp server now all all the links i've said will be in the description below also i'll be making another video for outlook and office 365 how to set up scan to email for both of those again guys i appreciate you watching this video if this video have helped you you know make sure you guys subscribe and hit that like button it does help you know users like you find that video and make sure you know we get we get things moving so again i appreciate you guys and also want to thank our our you know prime sponsor trueparkings.com uh to to help us out on this and uh, you know get this get this help to you guys so again thanks for watching guys see you for the next video soon Bye bye